After years of political instability, Australia's incumbent Conservative Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull was hoping for a firm mandate in the country's elections. The security of our economy, the future for our children and grandchildren. That's what we're securing with our economic plan and only a stable coalition majority government can deliver that. A week later, Turnbull is still waiting for that mandate. With voting so tight, it's come down to a trickle of postal votes in some seats. Turnbull has secured support from independents and small parties in the event of a hung parliament. He's a certainty now to retain government. But that's only the first hurdle. One of his key reasons for calling a double dissolution election was to clean out an unwieldy Senate blocking economic reforms. Now it looks like there'll be even more independent and minor party members in the upper house. The risk is that anti-establishment lawmakers will hold up policies aimed at shoring up Australia's fragile economy at the end of its long mining boom. And Standard & Poor's has said that parliamentary gridlock could cause Australia to lose its AAA credit rating. The senators come from diverse viewpoints, from the left to the far right, and many oppose much of the government's reform platform. One of those senators, Nick Xenophon, is sceptical of the benefits of the free trade deals on offer. We are, have gone down the wrong path with our procurement policies, with not having a strong anti-dumping approach to below-cost goods being dumped on our shores. We've been very weak as a nation in dealing with these issues. We have not been great negotiators with free trade agreements. On the far right, there's Pauline Hanson. She served in the lower house two decades ago and made global headlines with her anti-immigration agenda. I and most Australians want our immigration policy, policy radically reviewed and that of multiculturalism abolished. Yeah, yeah. I believe we are in danger of being swamped by Asians. She also opposes Mr Turnbull's progressive views on same-sex marriage. In the mix, a former radio and TV personality, Darren Hinch. He's campaigning for a mandatory register for sex offenders and bail and parole reforms. We believe our court should show the same compassion and understanding for victims that they seem to show for the criminals. The election results follow a period of political instability in Australia. It's had five prime ministers since 2010.